If you're a fan of the British monarchy, there's no better vacation destination than the City of London. Welcome to Mojo Travels, and today we're counting down our picks for the Top 10 London Guide for Royal Lovers. Are you a fan of our videos? Be sure to subscribe to Mojo Travels and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the best places to visit when you want to see London through the eyes of a royal. Number 10. Hyde Park The City of London has eight royal parks, but the most well-known is definitely Hyde Park, the 350-acre green space in the center of the city. The park's royal history began in 1536, when King Henry VIII had it created as his own personal hunting grounds, but a hundred years later it was open to the public. While you're there, be sure to stop by the Princess Diana Memorial Fountain, which was built to honor the fallen princess in 2004. You can also just walk the paths of the park, knowing you're probably following in the footsteps of generations worth of royals. Number 9. The Goring Hotel Opened in 1910, this famous hotel has been run by the same family since its inception. You may not be able to afford to stay where the royals do, but if you want a taste of the experience, you can pop in for an afternoon tea. It's actually the only hotel to have been given a royal warrant by the Queen herself. A more recent famous resident of the Goring Hotel was Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, also known as Kate Middleton, who stayed there on the night before her wedding in 2011. There are even whisperings that there's a secret tunnel connecting Buckingham Palace to the hotel for surreptitious visits by its residents. Number 8. Mahiki When you're done with your day of sightseeing, you may want to unwind with some drinks and dancing. And there's no better place than this London nightclub, which is affiliated with William and Harry's friend Guy Pelly. This is a celebrity hotspot, with famous faces like Rihanna, Paris Hilton, and Beyonce making appearances. More importantly, it's also an old favorite spot of William and Kate, with William actually choosing it for a night out during his and Kate's 2007 breakup. Be sure to order one of the club's signature Polynesian-themed cocktails. Number 7. Q Palace Located on the outskirts of the city in the Richmond neighborhood, this palace is surrounded by beautiful botanical gardens and green spaces where you can spend hours taking in the peaceful tranquility. Kew is the smallest of the royal palaces and was once the home of George III's family. Inside, you'll get an intimate look at a royal home of which an entire floor hasn't been altered in over 200 years. The main floor underwent a major restoration in 2006, leaving it looking beautiful with flawless furniture recreations and a homey feel. Number 6. The Tower of London If you're interested in the darker sections of British royal history, this one is for you. The Tower of London didn't have sinister beginnings, but over the centuries it has gained a violent reputation. Founded in 1066, it was originally a grand royal palace. At the beginning of the Tudor period, however, the tower fell out of favor as a courtly residence and became more of an armory. It was then, during the 16th century, that it became used more often as a prison and place of torture. Many famous historical figures were executed here, including Queen Anne Boleyn. Number 5. Kensington Palace If you want to get as close to Will and Kate as possible, a visit to Kensington Palace is a must. As of 2017, both the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, as well as their children Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis live in the private section of the palace, and Prince Harry lives in an apartment on the premises as well. Your odds of catching a glimpse of the famous royals are slim, but it's still worth it to tread the ground of the public side of the palace and see the rooms of Queen Mary II, who reigned in the 17th century. Number 4. St. James's Park just across from Buckingham Palace and adjacent to the Mall sits another one of London's eight royal parks. At only 57 acres, St. James's Park is much smaller than nearby Hyde Park. Before it was destroyed by fire in 1698, the main royal palace in London was Whitehall, located on what's now called Whitehall Street. St. James's Park was nearby, and Henry VIII purchased the land in 1532 with the intention of making it part of the new and improved royal residence. If you're lucky, you'll get a glimpse of the famous pelicans. Number 3. Hampton Court Palace Located just outside the city of London, a visit to Hampton Court is definitely worth the trip. Hampton Court was originally a private residence that was eventually home to Thomas Wolsey. King Henry VIII admired the house, and when Wolsey fell from grace, he claimed it for himself. All of Henry's six wives stayed here at one point, and it was the location of his son's birth by his third wife, Jane Seymour. 
Today, the palace is open to the public, and guided tours are offered daily. Visitors can view the Great Hall, the kitchens, and the Royal Chapel, as well as the famed maze in the gardens. Number 2. Westminster Abbey If you want to see where nearly all of the most important moments in British royal history took place, you'll have to pay a visit to Westminster Abbey. In fact, since 1066, every English monarch has been crowned here, save two exceptions. Many royal weddings have taken place here, including that of Queen Elizabeth II, as well as Will and Kate. After her tragic death in 1997, Princess Diana's funeral took place here. 17 famous royals rest here, and you can visit the tomb of Elizabeth I, as well as Mary Queen of Scots, among others. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number 1. Buckingham Palace Much newer than many of the other entries on our list today, this royal landmark was built relatively recently, in 1703. Buckingham Palace is the main London home of the monarchy, and as of 2017, its main resident is Queen Elizabeth II. If you want to visit Buckingham Palace and actually go inside, you'll have to plan your trip accordingly. The palace is famously only open to visitors twice a year, once in summer and once in the fall when the Queen is away in Scotland. The Royal Mews are slightly easier to visit, as they're open from February until the end of November. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Mojo Travels, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.